Okay, this is a very important slide. We're going to talk about hematopoiesis. We're going to talk about how stem cells give rise to other cells. And we should take from this slide uh, the pathway and uh, for these individual cells and know what gives rise to what. You may notice some of the words give away what they do. For example, when you see blast, blast would mean the beginning or stem cell. And when you see uh, site, it means a mature, a mature cell. It's not always written here. It's not clearly in this slide, but for example, erythroblasts would give rise to the erythrocytes. And anyway, let's take a look at the top. We start here with a multipotential hematopoietic stem cell or uh, hemocytoblast, and it gives rise to basically two sections. We have the lymphoid and myeloid progenitors, or a common lymphoid progenitor and common myeloid progenitor. Let's look at the myeloid section first. We have megakaryocytes, erythrocytes, mast cells, and myeloblasts, which then give rise to these cells. So let's take a look at the megakaryocyte. And this is the cell which gives rise to the thrombocytes, or platelets. And what these are are pieces that are broken off from the megakaryocyte. Erythrocytes, of course, are the red blood cells, and you can you note know, the uh, hemoglobin component, which is carrying the oxygen. They do not, they're not nucleated. We have a mast cell here, and uh, we have a myeloblast, and the myeloblast would then give rise to all of these, all of the fills. And if you remember, the fills are the granulocytes. I use the way to remember this, I say, uh, Phil likes granny, and uh, so uh, the granulocytes are the fills, the basophils, which looks like kind of like a blueberry bagel, and uh, the nucleus that sort of fills the cell, and the, neutro the neutrophil, which is the component of pus, and you can see they're like little beads, and they're kind of on, li on a line, on a string, that they're separate into two or three pieces and then we have the eosinophils and uh, which have the, the giveaway red parts you know these are eosinophils and then the monocytes which uh, give rise to the macrophages and the monocytes have this sort of kidney bean uh, shape and these would give rise to the macrophages so just remember that if you see a macrophage you have to know that they come from monocytes that come from myeloblasts, and this should be easy to remember because you know they come from the myeloid progenitors. And blast is the meaning for the beginning of, and uh, this is the immature or stem cell. Now we just talked about uh, granulocytes and said that they are the fills, but how about uh, the agranulocytes? They would be the um, the macrophage, for example, We're talking a little bit about the agranulocytes. They're also known as mononuclear leukocytes, um, as they are one-lobed. They have a one-lobed nucleus, and they're characterized by the absence of granules in their cytoplasm, which distinguish them them from granulocytes, as as uh, I just uh, talked about. And uh, some examples of the uh, agranulocytes are the monos monocytes, for example. And then looking over on the other side, we have uh, B cells. Let me see, B cells and T cells and natural killer cells, so which, which are from the lymphoid progenitors. So these are examples of the agranulocytes, and the granulocytes are the um, the fills, the basophil, neutrophil, and eosinophils. So I think that we have a, a good understanding here, but remember that the main two sections are the myeloid and the lymphoid, and then we have 
megakaryocytes, erythrocytes, mast cells, and myeloblasts coming off the myeloid progenitors. And then off the other side, we have the lymphoid uh, cells, which are NK cells, and the smaller lymphocytes, T, B, and the plasma cells. Remember that the plasma cells come from the uh, B lymphocytes, which give rise to antibodies. Okay, thank you very much.